What a I love mama building peace nga. And what an amazing pastor that you have. Hey, pastor Kam, we honor you. We you. celebrate with you. We are with you heart and soul. Victory Tulsa is right with you. And we believe in what you're doing. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you. It's an Thank honor to so preach early. today. Amen. Amen. And we love you. know, Pastor Paul, you. when we start Burmese service at Victory, it was 1994. Wow. Yeah, Pastor Billy Joe, yes. Pastor Sharon. Yes. In that time, maybe 12 years old. Uh, Probably. Nine years old. Nine years old. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what God will do when we put our finances, our trust in Him. God has so much more that He wants to do for your church. Amen. This is just the beginning. You're just getting started. Your best days are right in front of you. Hallelujah! When my father passed away, I was sad. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. But I knew that I needed to trust in God. I knew in my heart that God had called me to one day pastor our church. And I knew that God had called me to serve my mom. My mom picked up the baton when my father passed. And she led our church for five years. As one of the strongest leaders that I know. My mom is here today. Hallelujah! And her faithfulness, her faithfulness to God, her faithfulness to her children, her faithfulness to the church, resulted in a harvest of what God is doing now. You see, when we are faithful to God, we impact future generations. This building is for the future generations. Hallelujah! There will be sons and daughters that will be saved in this building. There will be prodigal sons that come back to Jesus in this building. There will be marriages restored. There will be bodies healed. There will be financial miracles in this building. In this house, God said in the Bible, Do not forsake my house. Do not forsake gathering together. He said, Encourage one another even more as the day of Christ's return approaches. Now, Jesus left the earth when he rose from the dead and he told his 12 disciples, It's your turn now. I want you to build the church. Jesus said, I will build my church through you. 
And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Amen. So you and I, we're building the church of God. We're brothers and sisters. We are one big family. You and I, we are children of God. Someday we will worship in heaven. With, with every nation. Every tongue. Every tribe. We will bow down before God. And we will give him praise. But Jesus told his disciples. You will do greater things than I did. No ten cable sang aliens on the ball in Uhi. Jesus told his disciples, Anung Zuita Gena, I have so much more to do through you. No te tung torin tam people in the English. No eye has seen. Mitin Munaike, no ear has heard. Billin Zogzanilo, no mind has perceived. Nai Sunas was on Kiel Nilo. What God has in store. Pasian in Koidinate for your life. No Nuntana Swa. Isaiah the prophet said, Behold, God is doing a new thing. Can you not see it before it happens? Faith is the substance of things not seen. Faith is believing in something you can't see. God wants you to release your faith for more for this church and for your life. God wants to fill your life with blessings to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. The question is, do you trust God? There's a word called scarcity. Scarcity. Fear of oh. lack. There's a lot of people that are afraid that they're going to run out of money. They're afraid that they'll have more month than they do money to pay for the bills at the end of the month. And it causes us to hold on to what we have. Out of fear that we might lose it all. So we hold on to our money. Hold on to our talent. Hold on to our time. And God says in His Word, Give and it shall be given back to you. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. You cannot outgive God. When you give your time, your treasure, your talent to God, He multiplies it back to you. When I was walking through depression, I started giving out. I started giving my time to serve. At I started giving my treasure, my finances, a tithe to God. I started giving my talent to serve my mom in the church. And when I give, God does a work in my heart. God took away the depression. God took away the misery. He brought joy into my heart. He brought peace to my mind. Because when you live to give, God continues to bless you from the inside out. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says now to him 
who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you ask, hope, or imagine. God wants to do more in your life. I remember, Amen. Amen. I remember walking into the church a few years after my father had passed. He had built this big building. Almost 5,000 chairs. And fear started to grip me. What if when I become the pastor? What if those chairs never get full with people? What if I can't maintain the building that he built? Fear began to grip my brain. The fear of running out began to grip my heart. I became negative on the inside. I started thinking my best days are behind me. The best days for our church are behind us. And I heard God one day. He interrupted me in my thoughts. He said, change the narrative. Change what you're saying to yourself. Stop talking defeat. And start talking victory. So I heard God speak something to me. I heard God say, start declaring that your best days are right in front of you. Start declaring that God's not finished with you yet. Start declaring that you have victory in this life. Because Jesus lives in you. Start walking around like a conqueror. Start thinking like a champion. Hey, 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 hey. Proverbs says, As a man thinketh, so is he. Think small, live small. Think big, live big. You see, how you think and how you speak will determine how you live. I remember going to Cambodia when I was a teenager. And we were ministering in different villages. And we got to this one village where there was a ton of monkeys. And there was about 30 of our team members there that had come from Tulsa. And we were so excited to see the monkeys. We're taking pictures of the monkeys. You know, we wanted to see what the monkeys were all like. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden this big monkey he started taking all the bananas from the little monkeys he created a big pile of bananas and he was, he was king of the bananas and this monkey was fat he was obese he had too many bananas but he had a fear he had a fear that he was going to run out of bananas 
So he kept all the bananas to himself. And our friend from Cambodia, he told our team, he said, that monkey is dying. He's dying because he keeps eating all the bananas. He's eating more than he should eat. He's self-destructing. When you eat the seed that belongs to God, when you keep and hoard to yourself everything in that you have, the Bible says there is a curse that comes when you refuse to trust in God. Now, Jesus came to redeem us from the curse. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we are free from the curse of sin and death. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But, the principle of seed time and harvest, it still exists even in the new covenant. The principle of generosity. Generosity didn't stop when Jesus died on the cross and rode from the grave. He still calls us to trust in him with our finances. Jesus knows that if we will be a river instead of a reservoir then we will continue to bring life to others and life to ourselves. You see a river is alive. It's always flowing. I went to Israel as a little boy and there is a body of water there called the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. It's dead. Nothing lives in it. The water doesn't go anywhere. It stays right there. You see, when you hoard to yourself everything you have, there's no life. There's no river. But when you trust God, when you live to give, God continues to bless you. Just a few weeks ago, I was at the Tulsa Dream Center and outreach right here in our city. And I was with my two little boys, Liam and Benaya. What did I say there? What did I say? Benny. Benny. Oh, okay. Benny. Benny. Sorry. Not banana. My mouth is still. Sorry. Benny. Liam and Benny. Liam and Benny. Four, Four years old and three years old. And they both had a little toy. A little Mickey Mouse toy. And my wife and I, we said, hey, Liam and Benny. You should give that toy to one of the kids over there that doesn't have any toys. And they said, no. Mine. My toy. 
I don't want to give it. And I knelt down. I said, Liam, Benny, you're going to give the toy away to that little boy over there because he doesn't have what you have. And they were upset. I said, don't you trust me? They said, no. They do trust me. But they didn't trust me in that moment. They thought that by giving that little toy away, that they were being robbed of everything that mattered in life. What they don't know is that my wife and I, we're going to give them more toys for Christmas. And they need to make room for new things that we're bringing in. You see, when you give, you make room for new. New blessings. New opportunities. And so finally, I said, let's go give it to that little boy. So they're carrying the toy. Liam and Benny. Walking it over to the little boy. And they stretch out their hand. And they're looking away. And they finally give the toy. And the other little boy, he takes it. He says, thank you very much. And Liam was so sad. He was grieving that he gave the toy away. I want it back. Sometimes we're like this with God. We don't trust. We're afraid. What if God doesn't meet my needs? What if God doesn't bless me? And my son, he was crying. I said, Liam. I said, don't be sad. God's going to take care of you. And he looked at me. And he said, when? When is God going to take care of me? He wanted to know when. Have you ever wanted to know when? When is God going to take care of me? And just as he was saying that, the mom of the little boy, she said, hold on. My son wants to give you guys a toy. And the little boy pulled out a ninja turtle. Huge. And the little boy said, here you go. I said, no. My kids don't deserve that. I said, you don't have to give that to them. Let, we'll take care of it. You don't have to give that to them. The mom said, no, pastor. Don't rob us of this blessing. And my boys received that big toy. And I said, Liam, Say thank you. I said, don't you know that daddy will always take care of you? Today you got blessed by this family. 
But you don't have to worry about losing or giving away anything. Because you will always have what you need. That day, our family got blessed. It started with us giving. But we ended up receiving a whole lot more. Many of you have given to this building. Many of you have given into this church. Many of you have given to the kingdom of God. But you have not lost anything. God is going to bless you with so much more. You cannot outgive God. Let me pray over you today. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray right now for this building. And I pray for Pastor Kam and Mary. And I pray for all of the volunteers and the staff, all the boys and girls, the parents, the grandparents. Lord, I thank you, God, that you would bless this church more and more to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. And God, that they would have everything they need in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you so very much for your time and sharing the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. ตัวนี้นะ